I maintain that there is no book that I have written that is better in my own mind than my first book, because there was so much I didn't know about how terrible it was that, of course, it was brilliant. My God, I wrote a book. Uh, and then, of course, eventually I got critique partners and, and was exposed to people with experience who told me, well, it's good that you're writing, but let's talk about how to maybe do this a little bit better. Uh, and then I thought, well, I've done it better now. I'm like, no, 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 there's, there's still so far to go. Uh, now that you've uh, published uh, three novels with another on the way here in, in January that we'll be sure to talk about before we're done. Now that you're in publishing, you, you are an author and you've had, I'm assuming, some experiences along the way that uh, even though your fourth book is perfect, somebody still told you to make some changes somewhere in there. Um, does How does that temper your excitement and your love of just creating the story or does it? Um, it sort of does. And I, I've said this a few times in that I love writing a story, but I hate editing because <laughs> editing is when you really have to think about, does this story work? And you have to take out things that you might actually love, um, but doesn't make any sense to the story. Um, and I think like before I had all that information and I just wrote what I loved, you know, and there was no outside critique. It was just me just writing and just enjoying that journey. But um, as soon as I got a publishing deal and started working with editors um, and learning about structure and what worked and just, you know, you know, that saying about killing your darlings, like taking out the things that you personally love, but doesn't work for the story. I think that, you know, that sort of takes away the excitement for me. Um, and and I, especially the way I write as well, because before I used to just sit down and just write off the top of my head. And I did that with mangoes. Mangoes, I sat down and I just wrote straight off the top of my head. Um, but when I be, had a publishing deal, I learned that that couldn't work when you're working with somebody else. They sort of need to know where the story's going. And that sort of took away the excitement for me as well, because I needed to think about the story and where it was going and how it ended before I started it. Um, but it's also a good experience for me. I find that work, that method works better for me to sort of do the outline and the synopsis and sort of figure out, at least have a vague outline of where the story is going. That works better for me, even though I'm not like, oh, this is, I'm so excited about writing this story. Now it's a lot more, you know, tame, but it's better for me in the long run. She says. <laughs> <laughs> well, I mean, uh, why is it uh, important to make that change when you know somebody else is going to be involved to start? I'm assuming, do you write like a formal outline? How, how, how involved are you getting in planning before, you, before you'll start a project? Um, so if I'm working with a, a publisher, I, so I write um, a, a basic synopsis, probably like a page, and just do like an outline, maybe a few, like a paragraph or two of each chapter, um, of how it starts, what's happening in the middle, and sort of a vague idea of how it ends. I've been quite lucky in that I've worked with editors that have sort of given me the room to change that ending because it, you know, it does sometimes, you know, sometimes you think this is how it's going to end uh, on when you write an out outline, but then when you start writing it, it just takes you in a slightly different direction. And, and I've been lucky to have editors that have sort of allowed me that space to do it. Um, so yeah, when I just do like a basic like couple of paragraphs for each uh, chapter, or every few chapters, just so they just know how it begin it, what, how it begins, what's happening in the middle, what's the journey, uh, and how it ends, basically. And I'm going to ask this question a little bit facetiously because I have some idea it happens to me, unfortunately, uh, where my characters will uh, ignore my outline, just blatantly disregard all of my careful planning and say, no, we're doing this instead. And, all right. Well, I guess you are. Why do you think that happens? Why do you think that, that it changes from the plan at the beginning? I think, uh, well, for me, when I write an outline, I'm sort of writing it for someone else. And I'm in my head, I, I, I'm thinking about where this story is going and I write down in that moment where I think the story is going. But when you start to actually write and sort, sort of create this journey, um, 
sometimes maybe you do a scene and an idea comes to you and your character is like, no, I'm not going to go straight on. I'm going to be a left and I'm going to go up that hill. And you're, you're thinking, you know, shall I continue straight on? Because that's where I said I was going to go. Or should I follow this journey up the hill? Um, and I always find that it's better to just go with the character and where the character wants to go and you have the better ending that way for me anyway I know like with mangoes when I first wrote it it's got a completely different ending to what it has now when I wrote it it was just uh, a normal ending of the kids you know playing and running up the street and as I went back to edit it um, as they were going up the street this idea came to me of this house on the hill that was haunted and I went oh but I've written the story already shall I shall I go with it and I just thought, let me just go with it and see what happens. So I completely rewrote the whole story and went with this idea. And I think it's the best thing that I did. Um, I think you've just got to follow your heart when you're writing. It's still a tremendous leap of faith, though, when you already have the the outline, the plan, and somebody said, I like what you already had. Why are you why are you doing this? And you have to explain, no, not me, not me. I want what you want. The character wants this. <laughs> yeah, take the blame off yourself. It's not me. It's the character. I wanted to do exactly what you wanted, but the character said no. <laughs> okay. um, I think, yeah, it's so easy, isn't it, to just stay on track. Um, but I think also at the end of the day, you have to love what you write. So if you stay on track, but in your head, you're, you're not happy with it and you you're thinking of doing something completely different I think it's your story and at the end of the day you need to be happy with what you write um, and even though you tell people this is the direction it's going in um, you have uh, but you and it changes then you should just go with that because you know it's your story and you need to ha be happy with it at the end of the day I just believe that well, in theory, I, I believe this is true, although I'm open to the idea that maybe it isn't. Uh, that happens to me enough times uh, in life that I just accept that sooner or later, many of my uh, things that I believe now will, will be challenged. And I'll think, oh, well, now I believe something better. Um, but I do believe that if you love your story, if you're happy with it, esteemed uh, reader who eventually gets their hands on it will be happier with the result. I think we can tell when people are, are checked out or are not interested in their book. Yeah, 100%. I absolutely believe that as well. I think that you can tell when someone is not 100% into the story that they write, you can feel it. Um, I think it's the same with any sort of art, you know, if you watch an actor acting, and you know, if you, if you go to a show and uh, you see a, a singer on stage, you can tell when people are not 100% into it, and you feel that and you take that on and you, you're turned off by it. The whole idea of writing is that you bring people into this world and you have to bring them in fully. So you have to be fully committed to that world in order for them to believe that's real.